So let's talk about let's talk about on um, the um, bird's nest. Bird's nest as originally tied by, and again, originally, and there are as many variations of bird's nest as there are tires, so don't get caught. But originally, Calbird tied it on a two extra long hook, okay, and in this case, I show 5262. 5262. There is nothing wrong, and I have tied them on 200s, which is three extra long, and they've worked just as well. So, uh, Again, the originator was the uh, was the two extra long, which is what I'm going to be tying it on. One of the other flies that you could use, which is a slightly different bend, is the 2312, which, and you can see the shape of the bend. It's, it, in most cases, most folks do hoppers and some caps, but it has a different bend on it. Still works absolutely fine for tying and fishing the fly. Um, the other material is the tail. Again, we're going to go with lemon wood duck for both the tail and the wing. Uh, here's that uh, lemon, this is a teal dyed lemon wood duck which is more gold than, deeper gold than, than lemon wood duck is. And the other thing that's, as far as I'm concerned, that's important and I like to try to stay with the traditionals. This is, this is the bird's nest blend as originally developed by Cal Bird. And that original bird's, bird's nest blend is 50% rabbit, 50% possum, Australian possum. And that's what you have here. Okay? So, so now one of the... Oh, and, and by the way, rib again is nothing more than fine copper wire, same copper wire we use on it. Again, brown, uh, I happen to like to use caramel, Adolf. It's not as deep a brown as, uh, as the dark brown is, but that's, again, you do want it in the brown shade. You don't want too light of a color. You don't want tan. You want the head to be somewhat darker in coloration. You would use the light brown when it's a little too light. I, I think it's slow. You may like it. If you like it, then it's good. If you don't like it, then change it. I happen to like the deeper color. But again, he calls out brown thread. And I happen to like the caramel, and as you can see, there's a, there's a definite difference. This, has got, this is a different shade of brown, and I, ha I personally like the head in this color. Not a big deal. Um, you're the tire. Okay, size 14. All right. Well, what makes that look so buggy, and that's the other little technique I'm going to talk about, is how I got such a buggy... If you look at the one that was tied traditionally, the head isn't nearly as buggy looking. I mean, the other two are bigger hook sizes, but the head isn't as buggy. And I picked up that buggy head, and same with the photograph from Hans Wielman out of Europe. Um, and his technique for that... Uh, you split threads or something? Yeah, he split threads, and, uh, but I'm, for, for the group here, I'm just going to make a loop. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to start our thread where the, where the, thor, where the abdomen is going to end, which is about the three-fifth segment. What makes this really interesting is how I come up with the tail. And the tail and the, and the, and the hackle and everything comes off the same feather. Let me get it. Yeah, this okay. So this is, this is the lemon wood duck. So I could pull fibers off of here and create a tail that way. But because I'm doing a distribution wrap, one of the things I want to do with this fly is I want to preen back most of the fibers and expose the tip of the feather. Okay, there's my tail. Can you see that? It's all part I have my tail and I have my hackle. And again, I tie it in and what's nice is starting at the point with a couple of wraps, you can then retreat it to the length of tail you're looking for. If it's too short, too long, you can adjust it, right? Once you've got your tail at the length you want, you don't need 
the rest of the feather at this moment. So I will tie in my tail one underneath to kind of prop it. Come back, grab my my wire, grab a single strand, tie it in on the bottom. I like to tie as many things as I can, especially things that may add a gram or so of weight. I like to add them to the bottom. My thought process is the more weight I can add to the underside of the hook. Have another one of these. Yeah, take that one. The more weight I can add to the underside of the hook, each gram allows the fly to swim points down better than it does by leading it to the side. My mind makes me think that if I have it on the side, I got more weight on the side, the fly's going to swim leaning over. It really hasn't happened, but it just, I don't, I, it's just one of my idiosyncrasies, I guess, is the best way to put it. So, for, for the abdomen, we're going to take our dubbing, again, which is 50% seal, and you want the guard hairs in it. When you're clipping your, not seal, that was when somebody is adding seal to it. Um, it's just possum, Australian opossum, with the guard hairs, uh, along with rabbit with the guard hairs. So don't, you're not trying to get rid of the short, long fibers, you want them in there. Okay? So you're going to dub, dub your thread thinly. I don't like heavily dubbed flies. I think, I think a sparse fly looks better than a fat fly. And if you want fat, and we're gonna do, we're gonna show you fat at the front of this thing because we intend it to be fat. Okay? But right now I'm looking at the abdomen and I want the abdomen to be rather slim. And now as I come towards the front, I'm gonna build this up. Building a slight taper on this thing, not much, a slight one. Now one of the things that I like to do with this fly is I like to create a wider segment right at the front of the body. And I want right here a sharp fall off. I don't want it tapered down, I want it to sharp fall off sharp because when I'm doing my hackle, I'm going to bunt my hackle against it and that sharp fall off is going to take this hackle and flare it upward. So I use the body to help flare it upward. Okay. In this case, I'm going to reverse wrap this guy just because. Show you, I can do it both ways. And helicopter that off. Now, here's where the real interesting piece comes in. Remember, I cut the tip of the feather off and I use that for the tail. And I want my hackle not to come almost to the end of the body, but not to the bend. So I want my hackle to end about here. Well, you can see it's already too long. So how do I create a soft hackle look with fibers that are too long? And this is the one as far as I think the most important part of today's tying demo structure is how do I deal with it. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to establish how full I want my, hang on, let me clip that little nub off of there, how full do I want, want my hackle. 
I mean, I could take and add more or less fibers to this to create more fiber drum, but I happen to like that look. So what I'm going to do it, shiny sides facing up. I'm going to take my hackle, lay it on the fly. Can you see it spinning? It's spinning almost like hair. Okay? And that is what's going to give me the full distribution wrap of hackle. And if it's not all the way around, you can massage it with your fingers. So now I've got the right amount of hackle and the right length. And it all came from fibers that were way too long. And if you wrap it on a bare hook, it'll spin just like hair will spin. That's why I took two wraps and then pulled it, because it just rolls it around just like hair, just like spinning hair. So I could have had a thicker hackle or thinner hackle, but I can get the right length by simply adjusting the feather. And as you can see, how much of this I cut off that I'm not using. So. Even though you have feathers that are too big and you're dealing with soft hackle, you don't have to go to a skin, wherever I put it, I put it back, you don't have to go to a skin and look for the proper feather to work that fly. Take any one. By the way, I could have used the same technique on this fly. In fact, the one that you saw, the teal, that's how I did it on the, the teal, I did that technique. So it, it, it'll work with any soft tackle fly. You don't have to have the right length of feather to create the look. And from here on in, the rest of this fly is nothing more than a... Uh, and you could do split thread dubbing if you'd like. Most of you guys might have trouble with split thread, so I'm going to just do split thread. literally means what it sounds like. I would, I would take a needle split my thread in half, and uh, insert my dubbing into the, uh, into the, which would create the same thing as this loop, but we're just looking for a bunch of hair. It would seem to me that splitting the thread, but the only reason for that would be to eliminate some bulk of the thread. Absolutely, that, the, that's it, it entirely. Because you're building up a small, big bulky body here. Works good on those stuff. You know? yeah. yeah. No, there's, there's some advantages to, uh, to using split thread dubbing. Um, a lot of folks like to do it with larger, I mean I've done it as with small as, uh, as small as um, 14 on but he, um, the hardest part of that is actually splitting the thread. Once you get the thread split, it functions just like a dubbing loop. There is no difference. You, you know, you would, it will function just like a dubbing loop functions. Come on. Huh? I know. Well, I was just showing the big spin. Now, one of the other things I also do is when I'm done here, I will also pull off whatever is going to pick out right here, okay? And each wrap is preened backwards to create that full, really buggy, fuzzy look to the fly. Okay, tie it off. Now, if you were frugal, this will tie another fly. You would just tie this in and tie another fly. Or you could do what I do. Dubbing I brush peel it. Pardon? Got another dubbing brush right there. Got another dubbing brush. In fact, where did I see? Somebody is making a big deal about dubbing brushes coming back. It's like, oh, this new thing, we're doing dubbing brushes. I'm going, God, they were doing back in the 20s? It's a little tool to do that one. Yeah, you need a little tool. Yeah. Yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, formulate a head. <laughs> yeah, <sorry. laughs> I think, uh, uh, isn't Puglucci sells them? You know, already done. Oh, yeah. but you, 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 you can you can make one just so easy. 
Yeah, you know, buying those things from them is like this. I never could understand. You go down to the store and buy. Hey, uh, and then rip the bag up. And dump yeah, it the yeah bulk. that's my yeah, create that's create that's the bulk of the fuzziness. That's right. You, got, uh, you know, a pair of uh, 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 a toothbrush, and I thought I grabbed it, but obviously I didn't. The Gucci stuff makes the prettiest one. You know, as long as you don't get. You just would. Yeah. So I use some of this stuff. Oh, man. I, that stuff tangles so bad, and I can never get to tangle. Well, depends how you're gonna. What you use? And there you go. go. And now you've got yeah. this fly that has a lot of movement, a lot of action to it, and you didn't have to go off and go through six different necks to come up with the hackle. So you can tie, you know, with whatever feather you're using. Um, you know, the one I use, I've got at least, I've got enough there that I can peel off the bottom for the tail, and I've got at least one more fly, so, so each feather... So each feather you can get two, maybe three flies per feather, and you're not having look. And in most cases, you know, you, when you buy bags of feathers, you end up with feathers that are way too big for almost anything you're going to use. And so here's a way to use the feathers that you normally wouldn't use because you just learn how to use the distribution wrap and create a soft tackle look with a feather that really starts to love. So you want to kind of